Okay, hello everyone. So my name is Da Zhongwu. So today I'm going to talk about the design and additive manufacturing of strong and lightweight materials. So uh, I'm assistant professor in mechanical and aerospace engineering at UCF. Before joining UCF, I was a senior research associate in the industrial and manufacturing engineering department at Penn State. And then prior to my position at Penn State, I earned my PhD degree in mechanical engineering at Georgia Tech. My research has been focused on uh, two areas. One is 3D printing or additive manufacturing. The other one is data-driven smart manufacturing. Uh, in this talk, I will focus on design and editing manufacturing of novel materials. So hopefully in the future, I will talk a little bit more about the other research area, which is uh, data-driven smart manufacturing using machine learning. And uh, currently I teach uh, two courses at UCF at both uh, undergraduate level. One is focused on digital manufacturing, it's a tech elective. The other, the other one is machine design two. Both are tech elective courses in mechanical engineering department. Okay, first, I want to uh, give you a very quick introduction to uh, additive manufacturing or 3D printing. So what is 3D printing? So basic 3D printing or additive manufacturing refers to uh, manufacturing processes that fabricate parts or components in a layer by layer fashion. And there are very uh, a few unique uh, advantages of uh, 3D printing. So I will highlight or uh, emphasize two of them. So one is 3D printing actually allows scientists and engineers to design very strong and lightweight novel materials. And the other advantage is 3D printing allows manufacturers to fabricate parts with very complex geometries in comparison with traditional manufacturing processes such as turning, milling, and casting. And in this talk, I will talk uh, cover two particular 3D printing processes one is called a selective laser melting. Uh, this is a process that uses a high power density laser to melt and fuse metallic powders together to fabricate a part. The other 3D printing process I will talk about today is called fused deposition modeling. So fused deposition modeling fabricate parts by heating and extruding a thermoplastic filament in order to fabricate or create a part. So in the first product, I will talk about selective laser melting and the second and third product I will cover. So these, uh, those two products will uh, relate to a, a fuse deposition modeling. Okay, as I mentioned, I will talk uh, two products I completed at UCF. The first one is focused on bio-inspired design of lightweight metals. So as you may know, actually there are many engineering applications in automotive engineering, aerospace engineering, uh, uh, actually energy defense uh, um, industries. These applications all require lightweight and high performance materials. So as you can see here, actually um, uh, scientists and uh, engineers get a lot of insights uh, from uh, bio, princi bio principles found in nature to design novel, lightweight, and high-performance materials. So there are many bio biological principles we can leverage. In this particular study, we are inspired by honeycomb found in nature and the crystal structures uh, in chemistry or in material science to design lightweight and high-performance lattice structures. So as you can see here, we designed quite uh, several, actually a few, lattice structures with different unicells. So as you can see here, I only listed four lattice structures and each lattice structure consists of uh, hundreds or thousands of repeating uni unicell structures. For example, here I show only four uh, uni unicell structures. Uh, they are cubic diamond, cubic fluorite, tetrahedral octahedral edge, tetrahedral octahedral vertex centroid. So as you can see, these four unicell structures are quite complex, quite complex. It's almost impossible for traditional manufacturing processes to fabricate these unicells and these complicated uh, lattice structures. So we fabricated these uh, lattice structures using selective uh, laser melting 
And the material we used is uh, one of the aluminum alloy, which has very low density. So in other words, by inspiring, by inspired by this uh, honeycomb and uh, crystal structure, we can further uh, actually increase the weight or in other words, uh, increase the strength to weight ratio of uh, different lattice structures. And also the raw material here we use the powder is aluminum alloy. The, uh, its uh, density is pretty low already. And here we, uh, after fabricating these lattice structures, we conducted compression, uh, compression test and try to understand the structure uh, property relationships. So as you can see here, the, um, the interesting funding actually is we can design uh, different lattice structures with desirable or even tunable or tailorable mechanical properties. In this case, we are interested in uh, actually two properties. One is compressive strength. The other one is energy absorption. So actually we have a, a quite a few engineering stress strength curves uh, generated from our experiments. Here I only show two extreme cases. For example, the figure on the left. So you can see actually uh, th these two lattice structures uh, exhibit very uh, different mechanical properties. In this case, actually it has relatively low engineering stress, which is compression stress, which is about 60 megapascal. But the other less structure made of different unit cells uh, actually can achieve very high uh, compression stress, which is almost 250 megapascal. And also the area and the curve represent energy absorption. So in this case, as you can see, actually on the left hand side, actually area and the curve is pretty large, meaning this particular lattice structure uh, can achieve very high energy absorption, which is a very desirable mechanical property uh, for um, automotive and aerospace uh, industries. And here we use the uh, DIC technology, digital image correlation technique to further uh, observe all the failure modes during this uh, compression loading uh, test. As you can see here, I showed four particular failure modes. So for example, in this figure, actually we observed crash at the top of this lattice structure. And then we also observed a multiple diagonal cracks for this particular uh, lattice structure. And then we also observed buckling at the bottom of lattice structure, as well as actually single diagonal crack for this particular um, lattice structure. So by using uh, mechanical testing and also DIC techniques, we can actually establish the so-called structure property relationships. In this way, by establishing such a relationship, we can further design and optimize uh, uh, novel bio-inspired structures. The second product I'm going to talk about is, also, is called a design and a 3D printing of composite. And a composite, as you may know, actually is also one type of uh, lightweight, strong materials. In this particular study, we focus on carbon fiber reinforced polymer composite, which is also acronym is CFRP composite. And CFRP composites have been increasingly used in the aerospace industry, particularly, for example, Air, um, Airbus, 380 and the Boeing 80, uh, 787. These two airplanes actually use a lot of uh, CFRP composites, particularly carbon fiber reinforced polymer composites due to its high specific strengths. So here we fabricated uh, different composite samples using uh, short fiber reinforced nylon as a matrix material. We also fabricate uh, continuous carbon fiber uh, to embed into our sample. So basically the sample we fabricated using 3D printing, in this case, fuel stabilization modeling is a continuous carbon fiber reinforced composite. And actually we can uh, design a different composite uh, by varying the amount of continuous carbon fiber or continuous carbon fiber concentration. So for example, we can print continuous carbon fiber at uh, different layers. We can also print actually different number of uh, carbon fiber concentric rings within each layer. So basically, uh, in other words, by varying the carbon fiber concentration, we can design CFRP composite with tailorable 
or tunable mechanical performance. In this particular study, we actually are looking at uh, tensile strength. So here we uh, plot a, a few force displacement curves, which is similar to engineering stress strain curves. So here uh, I'm going to show you two videos. So these two videos shows you actually the mechanical behavior. So the first one on the left here, this is a composite fabricated by 3D printing. But as you can see here, through this DIC technology, we can observe actually this uh, crack initiation and also crack propagation. So as also you can see here, this material we designed and fabricated observed actually relatively high ductility. So this actually uh, composite sample corresponds to this curve, false displacement curve. This black curve has pretty high ductility, but a relatively low uh, strength. So for the second video, this is a different composite design. If you uh, take a close look at this video, so the video take a very shorter time. And as actually you can also observe this, what happened is actually um, this part failed due to catastrophic failure. So meaning this uh, uh, crack initiated and actually failed almost right away. And this uh, sample corresponds to uh, actually this curve, this uh, uh, green curve. So this sample uh, exhibits pretty high strength, but a very low ductility. And here I'm showing, showing you some SE, uh, SEM images of the continuous carbon fiber at a fracture surface. Okay, so the last uh, product I'm going to talk about is 3D printing of ceramics. So again, ceramics is also a very uh, important material with very low density. So advanced ceramics exhibit very uh, superior mechanical properties such as high temperature stability, low thermal conductivity, excellent corrosion and wear resistant, as well as high hardness and low density. And there are many applications of ceramics in, for example, manufacturing, energy industries. So at least a few uh, typical parts that are made of ceramics. So in this particular study, we developed a so-called extrusion-based 3D printing process. So in this process, actually, we first uh, fabricate slurries, ceramic slurries, zirconia ceramic slurries by mixing uh, zirconia cer ceramic powders with organic binder and the dispersant. And then after fabricating this uh, slurry or paste, actually we use an uh, extrusion-based 3D printing test bed and uh, also uh, along with the air compressor to deposit this uh, zirconia slurry or paste. And then this so-called green part will go through first debinding process to remove organic uh, binder. And then eventually it will go through a sintering process in order to maximize the mechanical property of the 3D printed zirconia samples. And you can see from these figures, this is the so-called green part. This is as built or as printed uh, zirconia sample. And then this is the dried zirconia sample. And the last one is the sinter zirconia sample. So if you compare the scale bar, actually we observe quite large shrinkage after drying process and also after this sintering process. And the highest uh, temperature in the sintering process is actually 1700 degrees C. So that's why we observed such a large shrinkage. And also uh, oftentimes, actually 3D printing process will introduce defect. In this particular case, we are looking at actually a uh, porosity. So we also did, uh, uh, we also used uh, uh, micro CT images in this You're case. out of time now. Okay. So this is the last product I'm going to talk about. And here are the pretty reasonable high mechanical properties we observed. So in the near term and long term, I will be developing new 3D printing processes and the material design technologies. And I'm looking uh, forward, I'm looking for a new or potential collaboration um, in the following areas, mechanics of materials and the computer science, such as uh, machine learning. At the end, I want to acknowledge my sponsor as well as my collaborators and the graduate students. With that, I would like to answer any questions.